Best-selling author Omar Alakad Alakad is out with a new novel, one that shows the world's migrant crisis through the eyes of a child. Omar joins us this morning with more on what strange paradise. Good morning. Nice to have you back on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I couldn't help but think, as I'm starting to read this, uh, were you prompted, uh, did this novel, was it prompted by the death of Alan Kurdi, the little boy whose body was found uh, washed on shore in Turkey? I mean, certainly the image is, is seared into my mind. Um, a few years ago, I was, uh, I was reading a story on uh, a migrant ship that had capsized. Um, across the Mediterranean Passage, and the details of what had happened were, were about as horrific as, as you would imagine. Um, but one of the things that astounded me about, about that story, and subsequently almost every story like it, is how it inspired this incredible amount of outrage for about 24 hours. And then everybody moved on. Um, right. And so I was, I was thinking about that when I was constructing this book. It, it's certainly not Curdie's story. It is um, a reinterpreted fable. It's the story of Peter Pan recast as the story of a modern-day refugee. But it's very much inspired by this idea of the privilege of instantaneous forgetting, how quickly we can be outraged by something horrific and then very quickly move on. Right, because a lot of the characters in this book are tourists, and they're, they're kind of angry that, well, you know, this migrant ship has, uh, one of many, has shown up on their beach, and it's ruined their vacation. Yeah, half the book takes place in an in a unnamed western island where uh, this child is the sole survivor of, of a migrant shipwreck. And on this island, um, one of the very few concrete steps that the authorities and the business leaders and everyone on this island takes in response to these these shipwrecks is to offer discounts for the tourists to make sure that they keep showing up um which again i think is obviously a statement on on where our priorities lie when it comes to something like this and how how quickly cruelty can be established as a baseline and accepted so long as everything else keeps moving and and the money keeps flowing in Right, but yet there's a girl, there's a 15-year-old girl, and, and when you're reading things, you, I assume her, do you pronounce her name Vana? Is that how you? I do, okay. yes. So she kind of sees what happens. She runs into this little boy as he's running away from, from the military that's trying to capture him because he, he does survive uh, the shipwreck. Um, and, and she sees what happens. She sees the monstrosity of her own family, how they're trying to help capture this little boy and, and just take him away. But she really steps in, and I love the relationship between the two because even though they don't speak the same language, they really help each other out. Well, th thank you for that. Um, I, 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 I was thinking a little bit with the character of Vanna of, of you know, she, she's someone who's, who's trying to make sense of, of her own privilege and how to be a good person in that context. I mean, you know, a, a lot of the book is obviously about the idea of kindness and the necessity of kindness, but also the asymmetry of kindness. You know, if you're lending somebody a helping hand, most of the time that means that you are in a spot above them and able to and lend them a helping hand. So I was thinking a little bit about that, and I, and I think she's a character who is trying to figure out what being good means when you are born into a position where you don't necessarily have to be. Right. There's a, there's a line in here that I can't get over because it, it sums up so much uh, kind of what we're going through now with the pandemic, where the colonel who's looking after this little boy, looking out for him, says, you can't bet your future on work that requires the coming together of people, not now, not with the world the way it is. The days of people coming together are ending. It's a time for coming apart. That is so true in this book. I, you know, one of the strange things about writing these things is, you know, it takes you years to put it together and... Mm -hmm. and uh, you, I mean, I don't, I don't know the quality of the book. It's hard for me to, to figure these things out when I'm in the, you know, you, you can't see the forest for the trees sort of thing. Um, but you never know what the world is going to look like when you're on the other end of this kind of, of process. Um, so it, it was a strange thing to have the book come out with a line like that into a moment like this, obviously. Right. I wish we had half an hour to talk, but we've run out of time. What strange paradise is out now? Omar, great to speak with you again. Look at the details Thank up at chch.com.